Glory to Ukraine. That's an unarmed Ukrainian captive soldier moment before Russians shot him dead. Afternoon, this is Henry Keane on your ATV channel, today trying to explain some horrific things in easy terms. Take a look at this photo. This is the defender of Bakhmut, unarmed and captured, being on Ukrainian soil. He says, glory to Ukraine, and in a moment, he will be shot by the Russian invaders. According to preliminary information, this, his name is Timofey Shadura. Currently, the body of our POV is located and the territory is temporarily occupied by the enemy. The final confirmation of the identity can be established only after the return of the body and the relevant examinations. But again, a Ukrainian prisoner of war gets captured on his own soil by Russian invaders and then shot for being a Ukrainian. The occupier kills for the very fact that we are Ukrainians, for the word about Ukraine, for our dream of Ukraine, for our lives, the lives of Ukrainians. And we are destroying the occupier everywhere, wherever it yields results for Ukraine. You know, I just might be running out of simple terms for an explanation for you today, dear world. There's nothing simple here to explain, and nothing complicated either. There isn't even anything new here. Just so you, you understand, this is an outrageous war crime that happened. It's just another ordinary day of the criminal Soviet Russian invasion army in Ukraine. This is how they fight. Moreover, this is how they live back there in Soviet Russia. This is exactly the kind of God they believe in. And this is the future the Kremlin leader of this destroyed horde is trying to impose on Ukraine. A future where everything can be justified. Invasion to foreign country, execution of prisoners of war captured on their own homeland, rape, kidnapping of Ukrainian children, nuclear blackmail of a civilized world. You name the crime, Russia finds the pretext. In the Russian segment of Telegram, after the appearance of the video of the execution, a real bacchanalia began. The channels of Zet Patriots were filled with mocking commands. The Russians regarded the execution of an unarmed Ukrainian against the backdrop of numerous failures on Second Army of the World as a big victory. A brutal execution video which began circulating on social media networks on Monday, yesterday evening reached the top thread in Twitter. Horrific video of an unarmed Ukrainian prisoner of war executed by Russian forces merely for saying glory to Ukraine. Another proof this war is genocidal. It is imperative that Karim Khan launches an immediate international criminal court investigation into this heinous war crime. Perpetrators must face justice. Dmitry Kuleba, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, on Twitter. Of course, Ukraine has demanded the International Criminal Court, ICC, investigate this outrageous war crime. But the thing is, however, that the crime, and especially the war crime, is somehow sacrosanct in Russia. War crimes are cultivated in Russia, and they are whitewashed by propaganda and myths about Nazis. The murder of a prisoner of war is another example of this. It is also an example of their national insignificance and weakness. There will be retribution for every such war crime. No one will be able to hide from it. Andriy Yermak, head of the Office of the President of Ukraine, on Telegram. And how are the criminal Russian army is doing on our land these days, just by the way? If PMC Wagner is now retreating, then the following will happen. It is clear that the front will crumble, crumble to the Russian borders and possibly further crumble. In general, the situation will not be sweet for all parallel military formation that protects the interests of Russia. Prigozhin calls PMC a clue. A clue? Well, what does it clues then? What is the country that needs a clue like this? What would you expect from the army that consists of inmates and criminal mercenaries that are not legit even in their own country? What would you call an army running low on resources and wild on killing unarmed prisoners of war? What would you call a population that allows a morbid power addict to power and let him stay there for a quarter of a century, changing the constitution to his own needs, inflicting a worldwide isolation onto all nation and a brink of a war, maybe even nuclear one, to the whole world? Having a hard time defining an easy term for such people? Well, we in Ukraine have one for you. Call them Russians.
Turkey is likely to be making every effort possible to continue the grain deal, which allows food export from Ukraine through green corridors in the Black Sea. Negotiations are underway, as stated by Turkish Foreign Minister Mavlut Cavusoglu. His words were heard at the UN conference on the least developed countries, which was held in Qatar. We are working hard on the smooth implementation and further extension of the Black Sea Grain Agreement, Mevlut Cefasoglu, Foreign Minister of Turkey. Separately, the Turkish Foreign Minister noted that he had recently discussed the continuation of the grain deal with UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez. The grain deal helped the whole world especially the poorest of the countries. Due to the supply of Ukrainian grain, it was possible to reduce world food prices. Will the deal continue? The grain agreement was originally concluded in the summer of 2022 and extended in November same year. The deal expires in 11 days on March 18th. And if it's not extended again, Ukraine will lose the ability to export grain through its own ports. This week we will send a formal proposal on the need to work on an extension of the agreement. We will ask to extend it not by 120 days, but at least a year, because the Ukrainian and world agricultural markets should be able to plan these volumes in the long term. Yuri Waskov, Deputy Minister for Communities, Territories and Infrastructure Development of Ukraine. At the same time, Ukraine will insist on increasing the number of inspection teams in order to eliminate the enormous line of ships waiting for inspection. Wait, what? If everyone in the world working so hard on this deal, then why is it in danger? Might it be someone sabotaging it? The Russian Foreign Ministry already stated earlier that Russia will give its consent to the extension of the grain initiative only if its own interests were satisfied. According to Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, this is providing access to world markets for Russian producers of agricultural products and fertilizers. And at the same very time, while talking somewhat understandable logic, Russia continues to systematically slow down the inspection of ships following the grain corridor. Ships have to wait for their turn for weeks. As a result, the grain just does not reach the buyers on time. And this already creates risks for global food security because the total export of grain from Ukraine is declining. So, when you say Russia's war against Ukraine next time, be sure uh, you really mean Russia's war against the world because this is exactly what it is. Russia is looking for weapons and military equipment around the world to continue its brutal war against Ukraine. And now all eyes at China. The Kremlin is trying to convince Beijing to send weapons and artillery shells. At the same time, the collective West argues and urges China not to make this quite a fatal mistake. For example, the president of the United States, Joseph Biden, said that he talked to Xi Jinping and warned him about economic consequences. And the leader of China agreed that the future of the country is dependent on Western investments. China can't have it both ways when it comes to the Russia aggression in Ukraine. It can't be putting forward peace proposals on the one hand while actually feeding the flames of the fire that Russia had started with the other hand. We did very clearly warn China about implications and consequences of going through the providing such support. We will not hesitate, for example, to target Chinese companies or individuals that violate our sanctions or otherwise engaged in supporting the Russian war effort. Anthony Blinken, United States Secretary of State. It only looks like China right now has huge economic and political advantages because of war against Ukraine and sanctions against Russia. Almost during the year, Beijing is buying crude Russian oil and gas at enormous discount. And it helps China to stimulate its economy, which in 2023 will grow by a staggering, wait, what? Only 5%. The lowest number in the last 30 years. So it looks like China must decide they want to help Russia or they want to help themselves. Because they can't sit on two chairs in one go, especially after the information about negotiations of weapon supply became public. No wonder the Chinese were angry after the secret was unveiled, but things are what they are. The question is, what's next? Well, of course, Beijing wanted to keep any support of Russia in secret. I just wonder how in the world that would be possible, but I leave that to China. They should understand that the dissemination of such information will devastate the image of the country as a neutral intermediary and also harm relations with Europe and the United States.
A confrontational scenario is developing, but China is not ready at the moment for the hot stage of confrontation with the United States, because the prerequisites are not in favor of China. It is in the geopolitical environment of unions. The United States will build up the strengths of its ally on the periphery of China. This is evident from David's strategy, and China needs a calm situation inside the country and on the external perimeter in order to convert the economic potential, which is now growing, into military power and geopolitical influence in the external arena. If such a calm scenario does not exist, neither inside nor along the outer perimeter, China will not be able to achieve its strategic goal of building up its capacity to directly challenge the United States. And most likely, we will see the development of a confrontational scenario to prevent China from realizing its full potential. But now, Russian allies are not only China. According to the intelligence of different countries, North Korea is sending its weaponry to the aggressor. Also, Iran sends Shahids and Mohajis drones and says to supply more. Russia hopes to purchase ballistic missiles from Iran, as was previously reported by Financial Times. Wow! What's wrong? Great shortage of great missile in Great Russia? The Russian Federation has spent a huge amount of human resources, weapons and materials. Its economy and production are not able to cover these losses. Kirill Budanov, the head of the main intelligence directorate of the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, in an interview with USA Today. I think it is another great strategic plan of Comrade Putin. Go for it, Comrade. Buy those ballistic toys from Iran. And make sure that in response to this, the United States and allies will transfer even more long-range attackers to Ukraine. Couple of more of such Russian deals, and one day our Ukrainian attackers will hit Moscow just the way Moscow is hitting us today. But help is not limited to foreign military aid to the Kremlin. According to Western analysts, the volume of Russian foreign trade, which was reduced due to Western sanctions, by the end of last year had almost returned to pre-war levels. Only now, it is Asia that is actively developing trade with the Russian Federation. According to the New York Times, Iran, Turkey, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Armenia and China have begun to supply Russia with goods and have stopped flowing from the West, from computer chips and smartphones to household appliances. This is also indicated by the increase in the volume of Russian shipping in recent months. As long as China remains the largest consumer of Russian raw materials, the West will not succeed in isolating Russia on the world market, experts say. This is actually a new serious challenge for the United States. Moreover, the Europeans here may not show unity with Washington. The economies of many European countries are heavily dependent on the Chinese market. All these factors indicate that the Kremlin still has ways to circumvent Western sanctions and find sources of funds to continue the war against Ukraine. And that is exactly why we need more weapons to win on the battlefield. Sanction mechanism is a good thing, very useful, but too slow, clumsy. And as we see, not always working. So we don't have time to hesitate, dear world. Want this war to end? Help us win. It was Henry Keane on your ATV channel explaining hard things in easy terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine. Stay safe and tune for more.